Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video we're going to take a look at images and as you're probably aware Box2D doesn't know anything about rendering or images so the reason we have images in here is just to make it easier to position the images relative to a body so uh, we can add an image to the scene and we can place it in the background if we like where it doesn't move or we can attach it to a body so that when the body moves uh, we can calculate where the image should be in the scene to draw it. So uh, it's probably best explained by actually adding an image or two and seeing what we can do with them. So I'm going to start with this scene here where we just have one dynamic body well, and a ground body I suppose and have some images here and I'm going to drag and drop these onto my editor view and they will be dropped at the position where I drag them with the mouse and I'll put them side by side here so that we can see that when you do this when they're initially dropped they become the same height so they become a height of uh, one unit in the physics world and after that you'll have to scale them to to be the size that you want um, and let's have a look at some of the properties for images oh, of course to be selecting and editing images you need to be in image edit mode which you can access with the I key shortcut key and you can select multiple images and so on. So let's look at this uh, car image here and it has a name as the same as all other items. Body is set to none to begin with because we just dropped it onto the background. We have the file here which we can change by clicking this little button and then we can choose another file if we want to there. Uh, we have the center point, so that's basically just this white cross in the middle. Uh, okay, that's the selection center, so if we select more than one, the raw white cross will move. So uh, there's actually no marker shown for the center, but that's what the center point is. So you can set that manually if you want to. You can type a location in here. Angle is just the angle, which is the same as for bodies, so we can set that by rotating scale. Uh, scale here is going to be uh, let's see if we can I might just change the colors of the one unit lines here uh, of, uh, that should give us hopefully you can see these lines a little bit better now uh, so these green lines here are a grid of one unit lines in the physics world. So this scale here, if we set this to one, uh, let's go back to here, this angle zero, I'll set the scale to one for both of these images. So this is this is the size they were when you dropped them in. And a scale of one just means that the height of the image is going to be one unit in the physics world. So if we make this scale of two, now we can see that the height of the image is two units in the physics world. So it's just based off the height. Okay, opacity. Uh, these all have tooltip um, explanations here by the way too. Opacity uh, starts off at 0 0.5 by default and that just helps us to be able to place images on top of each other and still see the one behind it. But most of the time I think before you export you'll want to change these to full opacity so that you can control the opacity from your game code a bit better. So this is at full opacity now. And now that we're at full opacity we can see that the tire is actually being rendered on top of the car 
and this is just um, controlled by one of these next properties here uh, okay we just jumped to the bottom okay we're at the bottom now render order is by default this is zero and they'll both be zero at the moment but we can specify the render order which is just a number so it can be you know one two three minus one minus twenty whatever and you can make it floating point number as well so let's say we want the car to be drawn on top of the tire uh, so we have the tire selected now let's just uh, make this a little bit clearer in case we need to later so we have the tire selected and we'll make this say this is render order one and then we'll select the car and we'll make the car say 1.5 or something like that higher than 1 so when we change the render order we'll see now that the car is rendered on top of the tire um, the exception to that is if you are mousing over an image and then it all shows up uh, with a little bit of transparency so you can actually see what you're selecting okay what else do we have flip uh, flip just means that the image will be flipped horizontally like this and if you want to um, yeah okay <laughs> not sure what I was going to say there uh, linear filter this will give us one of two options we can do nearest or linear and probably a better this is one of the better images to check this setting with and the default is linear which means each pixel of the image is um, sort of averaged with the, its neighbor in a linear filter when we render it this uh, is a common filtering option in a lot of um, rendering APIs like OpenGL and uh, DirectX and so on but we can set this to be nearest in which case we see every pixel unchanged so this is sort of a minecraft style filtering I guess you could say so um, when you export this into your program you'll probably want to control this separately yourself in the program so I don't think at this stage a lot of people will be making much use of this but there are possibly exceptions which I can think of and they may be that if this image rather than being just a, a decoration like this tire picture if the image that you import was actually say a level map or something where each one of these pixels had some meaning like it was uh, ground or air or uh, some kind of a physical thing in the game world uh, it's conceivable that you might be able to use these images to lay out your game level with and in the future I'm also hoping to be able to use these pixel edges uh, to do some kind of auto tracing to automatically create physics shapes from these pixel level edges hopefully that's just a, a planned future feature okay now those are the basic properties of images and we kind of skipped over this one here talking about bodies so where's our body let's uh, bring these over here and just before we go changing the bodies we'll have a look at what we've got so far and that is nothing is really attached to the body at all we just have the images sitting there in the background and as you might recall when we're in a player view we can choose not to show images like this so I've just turned backing images and body images both off and if I turn them both on we'll see those images show up again so 
these at the moment are backing images because they have no body, they don't move around, they are considered to be part of the background. So going back to the editor view, let's attach this car image to this body A and we can do that by coming over here and clicking this button and what that will do is allow us to select the new body for the image so we can click down here on body A and now when we mouse over our image we'll see the dashed line going down to the body below it and when we mouse over the body in body mode uh, no we don't see that ah okay perhaps it would be better if there was a uh, oh no that's right because bodies don't own images they're just the that's right the images have a reference to the body that's how it works um, but let me know if you think it might be better to also have a dashed line coming from the body to the image when you mouse over the body. It's easily done. So now, if we go back to our player view, we'll see that the image is going to be following this body around like that. And now we can differentiate between these by hiding body images or background images. And any body can have any number of images attached to it, so we could also I knew that. We could also attach this image to the same body like that. And it's uh yeah, perfectly capable of having multiple images on one body. Okay, um, and I think that's about it. Of course, you can do all the other typical things. Once you have an image attached to a body, you can move around, move the image around, and it stays in that local space for that body. So we could place this image sort of along the side of the... Um, let's put that one at the top. Uh, so we can move things around in this body's local coordinate space and we can use shift D to duplicate things. Uh, we can't do the scaling and the negative to uh, mirror things unfortunately but we can mirror things uh, by flipping them uh, using this flip property here that is. And in the same way that we can copy and paste fixtures to other bodies, we can also copy and paste images to other bodies. So let's say I had another body over here, and I wanted to. What's going on here? Just a second. Okay, so all of those images are on that body there. And let's say I wanted to copy all of these three images. I could do Control C. And if I go back to bodies mode, let's see what we have. Okay, we have no bodies selected. What does that give us here? Paste three images into background. So that means they will go into the background as static images. Now if I have a body selected, let's select this body. This time when I check what's going to happen with when I paste, I have three images that will be pasted onto this one body that I selected. So let's make a few more bodies just to illustrate this. If I have three bodies selected and I go to paste, I will paste three images onto the three bodies that we have here. So I'll do that, and just to run that, it's getting a bit messy, but hopefully you can see what's happened there. We have three bodies, all with the same 
images attached to them like that. So that can be quite a handy way of setting up uh, a lot of bodies with the same image mappings on them. Okay, I think that's going to do it for images, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.